guess um, the topic today is Yom Yushalayim uh, celebrations, which actually of this whole month, going from Yom Atzmut through Yom Yushalayim. I'd like to um, offer a certain insight, which I find actually quite private for me, but I, it's really why this, these days are very special and have major theological importance in my life, and I believe in the lives of this nation. Um, I'd like to start with a story. Uh, it was years, years, years ago that I was in Paris once on the Shiva Sabbat Tammuz, on the 17th day of, t- 17th day of Tammuz. It was a fast day. And um, being in Paris, I decided I wanted to go to the Louvre, to the great museum, to the Roman pavilion. I really wanted to see uh, what Titus and uh, his father Vespasian looked like. I was just curious. Going there and contemplating about that, I went into the next hall, and in the next hall there was this unbelievable uh, statue. It was a replica, a very famous piece of art found on the outside facade of the um, cathedral in Strasbourg. It was called uh, Ecclesia and Synagogue, if I'm not mistaken, meaning the church and the synagogue. And there you had, the picture, you had a, a, a beautiful sculpture of two twin uh, young women, one of them was dressed in majestic clothing, holding a beautiful staff of authority of kingdom, and on the top was obviously the globe and the cross. This was Mother Church. She had a crown. Uh, it was, you could see the majesty of the kingdom of the church. And then next to her was her blindfolded twin with her clothes torn, and he also had a staff, but it was broken. I looked at that, and that... I sat there for quite a while, and it was very painful to see. For it was that was the first time I really encountered a vivid uh, expression of what we call supersessionism. You see, the Catholic Church believed for centuries, believed for centuries, major. Uh, it's been developed through fathers of the Church, Augustine, whatever, that Sar Shevet Yehuda, God took away the national identity of this uh, of the Jews. He broke his covenant. Because we did not recognize what they called the savior, we lost the national identity, we lost a sense of being a people. And the new Hebrews, so to speak, is the church and its followers. And so to speak, a new covenant, a new Brit. And this was implied by the fact that the Jews have no more staff of authority, there's no more nationhood. They can exist as people, actually their purposes, according to them, is for us to live the life of the Bible and to uh, let the people know that their church comes from somewhere. But we as a nation have ceased to be and we have no more covenant with God. Literally, Sar Shevet Mi Yehuda Umechokek Mi Ben Raglav. That was the, that's what I saw there and it was very, very painful. But let me tell you, I mean, Yechezkel already in Perik La Midvav, I think it's in Pasuk Chaf, discusses this, that we will be thrown into Gullis and the Goyim would say, in exclamatory fashion, if I recall, that's how the Yalkut explains it, these are Am Hashem, they were thrown out. So to speak, they will say, we are no more Am Hashem. Chazal already say that, Sidim Loimer Yisrael, the nations of the world will ultimately say, they are the Jews. They have the covenant with God, and we are no more a nation. And through history, it's a sorry thing to say that a certain aspect of that, uh, I would say, filtered into the Jewish psyche, and we lost a feeling of nationhood, and we became and developed beautifully as a religious community, as people who were searching uh, a connection with the Kaddish Baruch Hu, learning his Torah, doing his mitzvahs, but we totally gave up on the idea of having a national identity. When Herzl first uh, introduced the idea of Zionism, many religious leaders were terribly opposed to it. I'm talking about to the right and to the left. Because they thought they saw themselves as people belonging to different nationalities, which are of a certain members of a Jewish or Mosaic religious community. There's a famous um, article written uh, by a great Talmud of the Sabbath of Slabotka. His name was Ravram Elio Kaplan, wrote in a book, Big Fota Yira, when he eulogized Herzl and he said he didn't teach us Torah, didn't teach us mitzvahs but did teach us to say, I am a Hebrew. He awakened in us the thirst for a national identity. But obviously the church and masses of the world would not recognize this because this was theologically opposed to what they believed. 
And then in 1948, God called out and said, no, we are a nation. And he gave us back our national identity. It's not just we have Eretz Yisrael, which is so important. We have Medinat Yisrael. We have a nation. We're a state. We're a nation with a culture, with a language. And we grow, we make mistakes, we do good things, we do bad things, but we're a nation. That shook the church to the extent they had a hard time for many years recognizing the state of Israel. And one of the reasons says because they didn't really have biblical Israel, we only had the, um, the seaboard. So there still was no real recognition. And there was still major, major belief in supersessionism in what we call replacement theology. And that statue was still vivid and real in the minds of multitudes of people in the world. The ultimate chil Hashem of God breaking his covenant. And then in 1967, God decided to reaffirm his covenant with the Jews. And he gave us back, not only did he save us, not only did he give us the most beautiful parts of Eretz Yisrael, just as being Eretz Yisrael, he screamed to the world, I, they have a country which rules over all of Israel, over biblical Israel, that rules over Jerusalem. This is the unbelievable affirmation that lo sar shevet mi Yehuda, umechokek mi ben raglav. And this actually did happen. The church had to find come to terms with this and rewrite their theology. And as we know, the Vatican has slowly but surely um, recognized the state of Israel, ultimately recognized the, the independence of Jewish religion as a national reality. And things are changing and developing over there in Rome in a very dramatic way. All this because God sent this message starting in Heiyar Tav Chet and continuing further in Chodesh Iyar, going all the way to the Six Day War, with its peak being obviously Yom Yerushalayim, that God is with us and this covenant has never changed. For me, this is probably the most dramatic part of Yom Atzmot and Yom Yerushalayim. It's God telling us in the world, Lo Sar Shevet Mi Yehuda, Um Chokek Mi Ben Raglav, have very meaningful and beautiful Yom Yerushalayim.